I'm so happy to be with you today. Did you know that we actually regularly pray for every person who watches us online? We are praying for you. And recently I met a beautiful girl from Queensland, Bianca, who has been watching online since 2020 of C3 Ride. It was such a privilege to meet her in person here at church. And so if ever you're in the area, we would love to meet you, but know that we do pray for you. And so today we are looking together with our theme at We Are Made For This. You are made for this walk with Jesus. You are made for this as a disciple of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And one thing that we need to remember about being in the kingdom and following Jesus is that the Lord described to us that we are to follow his example. Jesus explained this in Matthew 7 at verse 13 and 14 where he said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Well, the thing to remember about this is that although the narrow gate in this description by Jesus seems more restrictive and perhaps the wide gate more spacious and accommodating for the crowd, we need to remember that the narrow gate, the narrow way of following Jesus, uh, leads to life. And in John 10, 9, Jesus explained this to us. He said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. So we know that Jesus is our saviour and Jesus is our Lord. And if you are looking for God, if you are trying to find him, the scriptures tell us that Jesus is the way that we enter through him. We love Jesus. We follow him. We love our father in heaven and we yield and surrender our lives to God and to the Holy Spirit. He is our king. So as we are followers and as we are relationship with him and with one another, there are a few things that help us on the way that help us to remember that we are made for this. One of the ways that we are made for this is through the word of God in uh, his word. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says this, For all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it's the word of God that helps us to know and understand that we are made for this by the power of God. There's a few things to remember about the scriptures and the word. Firstly, Paul affirms that God was completely active and all powerful. He was totally involved in the writing of scripture. It was written by many different people uh, in many different circumstances, but God was an active part by the power of the Holy Spirit in the writing of scripture. So therefore, scripture is God breathed. So the Lord's breath, his Holy Spirit. We believe that the written word of God, the scriptures are infallible and authoritative. This is the word of God. It is literally God's word to us. Even in 2023, this is God's word to you and I. And we learn from this. This is how we're made for this by following the word of God. Our faith is in God and in his word. We believe and obey his word. And sometimes this may seem restrictive, that it's a restrictive, narrow way. But we know that Jesus is our king and it leads to life. You see, in Judges 21, 25, the very last verse of the book of Judges, it says this. In those days, Israel had no king and everyone did as they saw fit. In the New King, King James Version, it says everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And you see, we are not the people that do right in our own eyes anymore. We follow the word of God. We follow the Holy Spirit and we live according to the ways of God. Jesus is our king. Uh, wide is the gate and broad is the road to leads to destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to life. Hebrews 4.12 talks about the word of God. And it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. 
So when we think about the word of God, one of the important things as followers of Jesus is to remember that we hide the word of God in our heart. We do this by memorizing the word, by reflecting on the word, by meditating on the word. It's hidden in our heart. This is what transforms us is when the word of God is in our heart. It leads us in the ways to live for Jesus. It deepens our relationship with him. When we know the word, it reveals the character of God. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 is, is an example of this. Jesus says in this scripture, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Through the meditating on the scriptures, by learning the scriptures, by remaining in the word of God, we understand the character and nature of Jesus and of our heavenly Father and of the Holy Spirit. In this little scripture, we know that Jesus is humble and gentle in heart, that when we follow him, we will find rest for our souls. So it leads us. Another way with the scriptures is that it deepens our relationships with one another. An example is 1 Corinthians 13, 4, which we always use for weddings, but is actually for everyday life, where it says love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Love is not rude or self-seeking. It is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs. You see, when we hide this word in our heart, when we know this word, this leads and directs us. So when we feel impatient with somebody, we remember that God's word says love is patient, first of all. Love is kind. So it helps us to remember the ways that we are made for this walk with Jesus. It also teaches us how to follow him. The word of God leads us in this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is actually a scripture about temptation. And uh, Paul says this, No temptation has seized you except which is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Now, this beautiful little scripture is about our everyday life with Jesus. Um, firstly, we remember that when Jesus was in the wilderness, for 40 days and he was tempted by the enemy, every time he responded with the word of God, he said, it is written. written. And so as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus, we have the word as well, the promises that we live by and the assurance that God's word is all powerful. So let's look at this little scripture about temptation. You see, with temptation, it's not the temptation that's sinful, it's how we respond to it. Jesus was without sin, and he was tempted in the wilderness, but he responded in the sinless manner and he used the word of God to do it. So this little scripture tells us five things about how to live and what to do when we're tempted. Firstly, it says that no temptation has seized you except which is common to mankind. Well, that means that everybody's tempted. The temptation that you're feeling is across the board. All people are tempted in some way often. And so it's not uncommon and it's not unusual. So therefore we were prepare ourselves with the word. Secondly, this word says God is faithful. So our faith is in God in his word. When you're tempted, God is faithful. He is faithful to me. Then it says he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. This is a promise of the word. But when you are tempted, it says he will provide a way out for you. So we ask the Lord, Lord, when I'm tempted, give me eyes to see the way out, to stand firm so that I can trust in you, that I know that you are all powerful. And then lastly, it says, so that you can endure it. So the scriptures are telling us that some temptations are of long standing and that we are to persevere and to endure. Even when you succumb to temptation, you come back to this place of repentance in God, trust in him that he will lead you in this way. So the word of God helps us to live our life. We are made for this. Secondly, the narrow gate brings us to an understanding of surrender. We surrender to the Lord and his ways. Recently, I did a women's event and uh, the uh, topic for the women's event was yield. And I thought, oh my goodness. And uh, I got the uh, email about it in June. And so I started practicing yielding. I thought, what does it feel like to yield? What does it look like? What does it feel like when you don't want to do it? What does it feel like when you do want to do it? So I started practicing yielding to the Holy Spirit. It was such an adventure. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And one of the uh, revelations that the Lord gave me was firstly that I've always thought 
that some tem temptation, some sinfulness, forgiveness as an example, uh, is an act of the will, that you make the decision to forgive them. You just stand there. But the Lord said to me that even these things, it's not an act of the will because that's about my own strength. It's actually yielding and surrendering to the Holy Spirit. So it's completely different. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, when you surrender to him, you're actually surrendering to someone who loves you, who empowers you, who equips you. So it's not about me doing things in my own strength, but I do it with um, the power of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Peter 2.21, uh, it says this, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And so we follow in the footsteps of Jesus when we yield, when we surrender. Jesus did that. He yielded completely and utterly. He surrendered his whole uh, life to the Lord. He laid down his life for us so that we would be saved. And so we follow in his steps. Thirdly, the narrow gate leads to life. And the life that we share together is very important. As believers in fellowship, this is a very different life to other uh, groups of people because we are knitted together by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a very important part of our discipleship because this is how we're molded, how the Lord shapes us. So we come into this place of fellowship and it's very different because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And just recently, the Lord showed me a good example of fellowship uh, and what this means and what's important. And uh, I go to Pilates on a Wednesday night. I've been doing it for quite a while. And uh, oh, I've been whinging and complaining about it. Every Wednesday I'd wake up and I'd think, oh, what's happening today? And think, oh, I have to go to Pilates. And so I would whinge and complain. I've been doing it for ages. And then one day something changed in me. Two things happened. One, when uh, we were doing its all floor work and I was on the floor and I was in a, a position like this down on the floor and I suddenly thought to myself oh this is like physical worship that I'm bowed down before the Lord and so I decided that each time we were uh, in that position that I would worship the Lord at Pilates it's like taking Jesus to Pilates and I really started to enjoy it I was worshiping the body of the Lord with my physical body the second thing that happened that changed Pilates for me was that I made a friend. After all this time, this lady and I, we started talking and chatting and we became friends. And it made such a difference to me in my Pilates class. Suddenly every Wednesday, I'd look forward to going. And you see, the church is like this as well. Fellowship is like this, that we come to a place of uh, we worship together, we do it together and it does something in our spirit, but also that our hearts are knitted together. When you're in church and you find a friend or you find someone who's like-minded and, and the Lord knits you together, this actually changes uh, the way we see fellowship. And uh, we are actually called to love one another. In Ephesians 4, 32, and then uh, chapter 5, 1 to 2, it says this, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So the scriptures tell us that we are to love one another deeply. And so I would love to pray for you. I'd love to pray that um, the Lord would really help you, knowing that you are made for this, knowing that you are made for this life that the Lord has given to us, knowing that he is God of all the earth. I'd particularly like to pray for you if fellowship or church is hard for you. I realise that for many people it's um, a great difficulty. There have been moments of pain and it's hard for you. And so I would love to pray for you that the Lord would bring healing to your heart. But before I do, I would like to offer an invitation. If you're watching today and um, you're looking for God, well, I have good news for you because the answer is in the Word of God, in the Scriptures. And Jesus said that he is the way to the Father. Now you may think to yourself, the Christian life is too restrictive for me. What about all the things I would have to give up? But actually, the Lord is the one who helps you. It leads to a life that we can't even imagine, life of knowing him. Or you may think to yourself, well, I'm not good enough. My life is too bad. The good news for you is this, that Jesus died and paid the penalty for your sins. No matter what you've done, 
Forgiveness is available to you because of Jesus Christ. If there's things that you've done that you deeply regret, things that you wish you hadn't done or things you didn't mean to do, there's no sin so great that the cross of the Lord Jesus doesn't cover it. I have good news for you. So if you would like to know Jesus, I would really encourage you actually to text the number that's on the bottom of the screen. But also too, I would love you to pray this prayer with me because the word of God says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If we have faith in our heart, if you believe that Jesus died for you, if you believe that he rose again, and you would love to know him as your Lord and Saviour, I'd love you to pray this prayer with me right now. So let us pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you died for me. My Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sins and I ask that you would forgive me. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you love me and care for me and I want to be a part of your family. Give me your Holy Spirit that I may be with your family forever. I thank you, Lord. Amen. And I'd just like to pray for those of you who have um, found it difficult in uh, church. I'd love to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just ask for the power of your Holy Spirit on each and every one. Lord, you know their suffering. Lord, you know their heart. Lord, I ask you would bring peace and healing to them now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you would lead them again to a place of fellowship and they would find life and love. I ask this in your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.